you something that you can do. We give you praise, we worship you, we worship you. Thank you for the privilege to come into your presence and draw from your bounty. Make your neighbor welcome as you access your seat this morning. You are blessed and welcome to the house of God. Hallelujah. We dwell in strange times. And because of the reality of our times, it is needful for us to have an accurate understanding of God. when we cannot turn to any stronghold for our deliverance we turn to the stronghold of Jacob but if we are to turn to the stronghold of Jacob it is needful for us to understand his ways accurately so that our hope will not be dashed hallelujah turn your Bible with me quickly book of first corinthians chapter 3 as we look briefly at the content of the apostles doctrine the content of the apostles doctrine in first corinthians chapter 3 verse 9 the bible says we are laborers together with god ye are god's husbandry ye are god's building so many metaphors were deployed oh first corinthians chapter 3 verse 9 sorry hallelujah I think I need to take the reading again. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 9. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. Now because Paul was trying to describe, to explain a spiritual thing, he had to use several metaphors within the natural context to buttress his point and to bring us into practical life applicable understanding of the truth of God's word and so he said we are God's husbandry and then he now says we are God's building hallelujah somebody say we are God's husbandry and we are God's building but the next verse which is my verse of emphasis is predicated upon the metaphor the building metaphor hallelujah so let's check my verse of interest amen verse 10 according to the grace of god which is given unto me as a you know he is he's a he's a smith is uh, is God's wise master builder. The office of the apostle sits upon the wisdom of God because in that office and in his responsibilities there is the content of design and as such wisdom is required. You can go to a particular place and what they need is a foundation. Is only in the spirit that you can lay a foundation without having to 
pull down the superstructure. Now, an apostle must be multi-gifted, fully enriched in the grace of Christ. And he must also be a wise man in the spirit. Hallelujah. Yeah. So he said, according to the grace of God which was given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation. Another build it thereon. But let every man take heed how he build it thereon for other foundation can no man lay except that which is laid which is Jesus Christ. So the metaphor that was most suitable for illustrating the reality that we have with God and the um, 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 premise upon which we can view accurately the apostles' scope of ministry and the apostles' doctrine is the metaphor of a building. Hallelujah. Are you with me? When Peter responded to the question that Jesus put forth, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And Peter's response was not a function of what he had studied, was not a function of what he had learned, it was a knowledge that was given unto him. Hallelujah. And Jesus made a profound statement because in the revelation or the utterance of Peter, the person and the ministry of Jesus was uncovered. Because Peter says, Thou art the Christ. And the Christ was with reference to his office, his ministry. And thou art the son of the living God. That's his personality. As the son of the living God, he was the definition of God. For the Bible says, God, who has sundry times and in diverse manners, spake unto the fathers by the prophets, as in these last days, spoken unto us by his son. And in the book of Hebrews chapter 1, we were given the privilege to see the definition of the stature of that personality called his son. For the Bible refers that he is the brightness of the glory of God and the ex express image of God's personality. That's God's definition. So he brought the definition of God into the human context and manifested the nature of God through human virtues. So the manifestation of God that was revealed in Christ was such that humanity could identify with and see the excellency of the ways of God displayed in normal, natural human context. Are you, are you still here? So he defined God. The revelation of God prior to that time was captured in his manifestations. Jehovah Shammah. So when he comes and he puts forth a manifestation, a name is attached to that manifestation and that is a revelation of him that is sustained along the line. But when Jesus showed up, he went beyond manifestation. He gave God a definition by expressing his manifold dimensions of divinity through a form, a context, a... Um, <laughs> That word form, actually, I picked it from the Greek rendition. You know, the Bible says he, being in the form of God, he took on the form of what? Man. In order for him to advertise God within the context that man could perceive. All of that he did in his capacity and his stature as the son of God. That's not the emphasis. So, uh, Peter was able to identify that you are the son of God. And that was what he meant by that. You are the definition of God, the projection of God. You are the manifestation of the will of God. Through you, we can understand the position of God about issues. Are you with me? And so, because of the privileges that the incarnation granted us, we could now discern the opinion of God. 
And so a woman is caught in adultery and judgment is about to be administered. And then suddenly the opinion of God is sought because Jesus is incarnate. The perspective of God can be, can be sought after. And God was consulted about the matter. And obviously, when God was consulted, we discovered that there was nothing wrong with the law that they were trying to administer. But the only thing that was wrong with the law that they were trying to, uh, with the process, was that the guys to administer it were not of sufficient stature. <coughs> that was the, now if, <laughs> hallelujah. If Jesus were not physically present there, that dimension would have been shut out. Just like it is in your own life as an individual. If you don't hear the voice of Jesus, there are dimensions that are going to be shut out. And so he came to give us the perspective of God, even in normal, natural, human circumstances and situations. And he brought the excellency of that dimension to bear. All this he did as the Son of God. But as the Christ, he sits in an office of the administrator of God's divine purposes. That was the office that the devil coveted that led to the coup he wanted to plot in the book of Isaiah chapter 14 verse 12 to 14. The devil was aware of the fact that there was such a seat. If we check the sequence of events in that particular scripture, you will see that his real intention was to exalt his throne above the stars of God, above the angelic realms. And his idea and ideology, his perspective, his intention was that he will ascend to Zion, God's administrative headquarters. And in Zion, he intends to be like the Most High God. And that means the only possibility of that becoming actualized was that he will have to assume the office of the Christ. And he stands alongside with the Father to administer his purposes. Because though it was prophetic that Jesus was the Christ, he became the Christ on the day of Pentecost. Are you with me? Peter gave us that testimony on the day of Pentecost. That a coronation service just took place in the heavens right now. And the proof that that service has been conducted successfully is the presence of the Holy Spirit that you see here right now. In the book of John chapter 7, the Bible says that the Holy Ghost was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. So the presence of the Holy Spirit is an indication that there is a throne in the heavens that has an occupant. Or you want me to go to the book of Psalms to show you in prophetic language that particular reality. And so when, they, when an anointing begins to come upon your head, it's an indication of the fact that you are actually of functioning in reality from a throne. The spirit outpoured is an indication of what? Of a throne occupied. That's the office of the Christ. Just like I said the other night, we did not plan to come this far with God. It was not an intention. Did you? We just showed up. But you see, there was a wisdom in God. There, is a, there was a throne in the heavens of which we had no knowledge of that was manipulating things in our life according to the counsel of God's will. And here we are. And you don't know when you took the decision that led to this that that something beyond your mind you know many times we think that eh, at least my we me too i'm a free moral agent let me show you the futility of your will god can still do what he wants to do through your life even without your permission now we need to understand god as the sovereign you know this guy Jonah was running away. He said, it's my own plan to run. Are you with me? It's my own plan to run. I don't want to do what you want me to do. 
And then when Jesus was preaching many years later, Jesus, the only illustration Jesus could draw that will reveal what was going to happen was now the illustration of a man that thought he was exercising his will to run away from. Well, I don't, okay. If you understand what I, I spoke in parables. If you understand what I mean by that, let me leave it there. So Paul said, this is what we do. Now, so when that revelation came by Peter, sorry, Jesus now made a statement. He said, upon this rock, because Petros, upon this rock. So the words that Peter uttered in the spirit realm, he uttered a rock. Are you with me? He didn't say upon Peter. Upon, he's not upon Petros. He said upon Petra. I will build my church. So he was talking about foundation. And that's why the metaphor that is suitable in that context is the building metaphor. Because Paul used agricultural metaphor and building metaphor. In 1 Corinthians chapter, 13, chapter 3, where I read. But you see, the foundation of Christ, the foundations upon this revelation that you have drawn from the heavens. This revelation is actually a rock. And this rock is actually a foundation. It's upon this foundation that I will build my church. And so the doctrine of the apostles is laying the foundation of Christ in every believer. Because that's the only premise upon which God can build his church. I know you didn't get that. But I will try. Amen? Amen. Paul said, this is what we do. I, as a wise master builder, have laid what? The foundation. That's what I did in order for you to become part of Christ. A foundation had to be laid through the revelation of Christ. Revelation of Christ that afforded you the opportunity to believe into him. Your believing into him is a proof that you have received the foundation of Christ in your heart. That is the down payment that God makes available upon which all of your Christian life will be based. That's where it begins from. Are you still with me? That's where what? The investment of God himself in your heart is the premise upon which all spiritual adventure must begin. You know, we have... A wide spectrum of doctrines of men. Are you with me? In Nigeria. A wide spectrum of doctrines of men and um, inclusive of these doctrines, even though. Are you with me? Now, when one of the duties of an apostle is to set in perspective. The purposes of God. Now, so that everyone can find his destiny within the broad universal context. It's not every doctrinal issue that we can answer yes and no to. Why? Because we have a foundation that is living inside of us. The way God might say that you will operate in ministry in a certain way. And that doesn't mean that he will tell me the same thing. One of the things, one of the implications of the fact that the Holy Spirit tabernacles all of us is, a, is, very, is, a, is costly to God's economy to, to sustain that template. It was, the Old Testament template is easier. Where only the kings, the prophets, the priests, and the Judges had the Holy Ghost come. It, I think that's quite. <laughs> that's easier to run. But now all of us 
Do not just have the Holy Ghost come upon us. The office of the Christ in us, we are a branch of that office. And the personality that runs that office, administers that office within us is the Holy Ghost. And so every one of us have a measure of that deposit. Do you know one of the things it will do? That reality, that context. You know one of the things it will do? And that's why we need to talk <laughs> foundation. Are you with me? One of the things that arrangement will do is that it will create what we call diversity. Because the God that Tabernacles you is living. So he still talks. He still directs. He wants to be involved in every detail of your existence. Alright? And there is, a, there is a uniqueness to his dealings in your life. And that's why the concept of the body of Christ is, is predicated on the principle of interdependence. Because there are dimensions of the workings of God that you have been exposed to because of your uniqueness. I don't know anything about it. That's the reason why you can come from just and minister to us as if you are part of us. Because in reality, you are part of us. And we are part of you. Diversity is one of the things that results what? On the account of the fact that we all have this investment. Now so, any attempt to clone is a manifest is a deviation from the economy that's why i said you know there's so much world here because pastors everybody that's why i said it's not everything that you can you can deduce by doctrine and it is deliberate because the foundation is still living the details will come to you there's no order of service in the bible Wouldn't that be a very important thing? Because one, I was talking with uh, a colleague of mine, a Muslim, and he said, who told us to go to church? That in their own, Allah said they should do this. Allah said this is how the prayers should be heard. Who told us? I said, you see, Allah was going to become extinct. So his survivor was in a book. Allah. But you see, we don't need all that detail because the one that wrote the book is still here. And just in case you doubt it, just in case you doubt it, he will speak to me about you now. And I told him that he wanted to marry a, fair, a second wife that was fair in complexion. And he was doing that because the lady was politically connected so that he could gain some political relevance. I said, did you discuss that with me? The worship and memory of Allah is in a book. So if that book is sealed and if it's no longer in, in circulation, you will have a problem with. Then he said, this thing I said, if I had said it in Kano, they would declare jihad. I said, well, that's why we are not in Kano. <laughs> <laughs> Don't try to play the master. We must all, when we come for service, we must all stand like this. No, you have gone into Buddhism. Because in Buddhism, are, your positioning is, is key. So we got into, we got in league with the devil and began to build things that are not consistent with the foundation. Are you with me? That's why he said, let every man take heed how he what? Why? Because no foundation is a reference. You didn't get to that point. Now, the Lord just said I should share this briefly. Hmm? Because I, my brother opened some things up. We, we couldn't sleep. We had to. Ah, you opened something. You opened something. But maybe the time we meet again, the, the dividend of what God has used you to do would have been manifest. Hallelujah. 
don't have time to go into the content of the gospel of the doctrine of God, doctrine of Christ, but is the same thing anyway. The same thing. It's one thing. All right. We may just call it. We may just, in terminology, we may just the same thing. Because Jesus, in the book of John, chapter seven, spoke about his doctrine, and he said his doctrine is not what. So the things he was teaching do not have their origin with him. Are you, are you here? Now, so he now gave us the secret of his doctrine. That his father that dwells in him is the one that is doing the speaking. So in the doctrine of God, of which Jesus was illustrating, Jesus was actually the sample, the sample specimen that God had approved. And the reality and the dynamics of the life of that man called Jesus was revealed in the fact that the father tabernacled in him. That's a mystery. There were 18 mysteries to his life as captured in the book of John. And that is one of them. We call it the, the mystery of the all-inclusive. There are times that Jesus will say, I am in the father. There are times that Jesus will say, the Father is in me. Prior to that time, that level, that kind of coherent reality only existed in the Godhead. But it happens to be that on the account of the foundation, the Bible says this is a proof by this we know that we dwell in him and him in us. So we coherent in him. So we are also partakers of that dimension of reality. And we need to understand the implication of dwelling in God and the implication of God dwelling in you. We are still talking foundation. That's the foundation that was laid in you when you gave your life to Christ and believed into Christ. And everything about your Christian life is going to take, is going to derive from that foundation now it is because christ is dwelling in you that makes your prayers potent because most of them too pray buddhists pray witchcraft people they pray krishna what makes your own <laughs> your own spiritual exercise different from an occultist is that what the holy ghost there's a foundation he dwells in you so it makes your prayers not just words it makes it a transmission of spirits makes it a legal tender in the spirit realm that can rearrange the spirit realm to accommodate your demand gives you punch and it gives you power the bible speaks about the the, the principles of the doctrine of christ laying of hands for instance the reason why my laying on of hands is relevant to anybody is because what Without the apostles deduced by the spirit of wisdom and revelation that the content of their spirit can be transmitted through the, their hands. You know, those guys were deep in insight. <laughs> they are trying to describe to us the way the spirit of God operates and the things that we need to be armed with in knowledge in order to relate with him profitably. And all such doctrine is a derivative of the fact that what? You have a foundation. You get that? And the building also, the superstructure, is also commanded to be in conformity with the principles and the rules of the foundation. For instance, your call into ministry must have to come from that foundation. It must be a whisper that has come out of that investment. It must be a function of the activation of your spiritual senses and perception from the realm of God's kingdom. Because, okay, one scripture before I sit down and bring the servant of God. Hallelujah. Maybe we'll uh, check John. John, ba? John.
John chapter 3, I guess. Okay, you know the story, so I don't need to read it. Nicodemus came to Jesus and Jesus said, Except a man be born again, he cannot. What? See. Now, I think that word see there will be better put as perceive. Because the see there will limit your perception of that scripture to sight. Hallelujah. But what is being referred to in that scripture is beyond sight. It's a manifestation of spiritual senses. Just like you had an eye when you were in your mother's womb. Is that not so? But the eye was not designed to function in the womb. You had an ear when you were in your mother's womb, but the ear was not designed to function well in the womb. So you had to be born first before your eyes became relevant. Is that not so? So you have spiritual senses, but until you are born, those spiritual senses may not be relevant. So Jesus said that except a man be born again, he cannot perceive the kingdom of God. You need to be born first. Then those spiritual senses that were designed and fitted into you will switch on. And then you begin to perceive a new realm. Where is that coming from? That sight. Where is it coming from? The foundation. It's a foundation that is talking. The foundation is giving you perception. Giving you new insight of the realm that you have come into. It's that investment that powers those senses. Are you with me? Everything you become in God... It's dependent on your understanding and your interaction with that foundation. Some people have understood it to the point where its operation in their lives makes them have insight into the counsel of God. They have understood it to that level. Some others have understood that investment to the level where they have wisdom to sit in offices of leadership and steer the destiny of a people in the direction of God's prophetic agenda. But you see, the point is this. We, the doctrine of the apostles is supposed to be something like a superstructure that gives us basic insight as to how to interface with this mighty investment of, of God himself in us bringing us to that point where we can walk our unique path in him towards the fulfillment of his goal for us because your call as an apostle your call as a prophet your call as a teacher is a unique path towards attaining christ likeness the challenges on that path the persecutions on that path the rigors of stirring the anointing all of that, it's a meticulous process that is geared towards what? Christ-likeness. He intends to consummate us in perfection. So that just as naturally it was in your nature to sin. You didn't need to be taught how to sin. Sin flows out of your nature. You would have developed the God nature to a point where it will become in your nature to obey God with the least possible resistance. That's perfection. Hallelujah. And all of that is coming out of one investment. Paul calls it a foundation. The foundation of Christ that is in your spirit. Are you with me? Now, so it is from that foundation that our spiritual senses are powered. And it's on the strength of our spiritual senses that we can interface and interact with Zion. And then, as we 
function from that point and we mature. A time comes where we now discover that not everything is important. But that which is important is actually pedestaling the voice of God and the leadings of God in our lives as priority. Now when we come to that point, and it is not a place you can come to intellectually. It's a place you arrive at because your natural tendencies and your natural defense uh, was dislocated. You actually need to be conquered to arrive at that point. But we cannot go into details. Amen? So when you arrive at that point, the voice of God, the perception of God becomes paramount in your life. You are living off what comes out of your spiritual senses. That's your plane of existence. That means you have assumed a higher mode than the natural mode. You have assumed a higher position than the natural position. You are no longer functioning from your position according to nature. You are functioning from your position according to faith. Alright? So it is within that context that we can say boldly that when you come to that point, you begin to distrust your natural eyes and trust your spiritual eyes. It means that you are now relating with the you that has been created in the image of Christ. Not this you, but that you. That you is beginning to show up. And it's that you that shows up. It's that you that is led by the Spirit. It's that you that is the manifestation of a unique dimension of Christ. Is that you that is the Son that needs to be revealed, that needs to be manifested, that needs to be unveiled? It needs to be unveiled because this you is intended, is determined to conceal that you. Are you with me? Hallelujah. So you will see through the lens of that you. And then that you begins to grow. It is that you that can have the dominion, not this you. There is nothing we can do to this you in terms of development, in-house, capacity building. <laughs> that will approximate you and qualify you in this you to come to that point. Now, we encourage people to develop themselves and just like pastor said it, paul said we should give ourselves to reading i don't know about you but i believe that the greatest human being the human being that has the greatest influence on my life i've never seen him because it's his books i read and something was activated what money i read his books and something i believe you may not believe it with me there's no problem but personally i believe that i'm continuing his ministry now i believe that i believe that what mani was carrying the spirit that was upon paul and i believe that that is the spirit that i'm carrying now you don't it has nothing to do with you it's me believing Relieve yourself from every responsibility. This, this is about me. I believe. It's a book I read. And as that book was speaking, it was not feeding my... It was telling me about that me. You know, there are some books you stumble upon and that book begins to tell you about that you that has been recreated in Christ. Every statement in the book. Uh, that was when I now discovered. I now saw somebody that was had the same struggles I had before I met the book. So I now gave him the book, thinking that your problems are so. I didn't know that that book was speaking to me. Not it was not relevant. The guy I came back was. I said, well, 
I don't have the equipment to diagnose accurately your spiritual condition, but I found an answer. Yeah. Are you with me? That book kept speaking. So every what my new book that I saw on the shelf, I bought it. Because when I start reading another one, it's a continuation of... And then he, he explains some things I saw in the first one more. Hey! For a long time, all I thought was what my knee books. Before I started getting my own revelation, I faithfully taught the things I captured from his book. Because of that, I refused to buy any book for more than 10 years. Only watch my knee. You see, some things... <laughs> you see, the apostolic ministry will minister to that you and then begin to call him forth call him forth as that you begins to come out you begin to see the things that god spoke were not intended to find expression with this you be fruitful he wasn't talking about have dominion until you have come to see that you rise you may not understand some scriptures as many as are led by this you may not know how you may think is one mental you know we did mental bible school mental hi jesus hallelujah and that's why prayer is a very heavy molecule in the apostolic community it affords the opportunity to begin to interface with the realm of reality I may preach something to you. It doesn't become conviction until the Holy Ghost says it. When the Holy Ghost says it, it sticks to your heart. And then when it has stuck to your heart, you now come to church and then begin to teach about that. It begins to explain what you have received. So my ministry is relevant at that point because I'm explaining what that you. Because it's possible, those days when we started teaching, we used to use concordance and bring bogus things. Ah! We kept the people for a while. But I, I desired something more than... I knew I wasn't striking the, the you. So when your spiritual senses are activated, that you has started seeing, has started perceiving. You know, that's the one, one of the first things that the baby does when the baby is born. So perception has come. And then with perception is responsibility. But we don't like that word anyway. We just like a prophecy that will pave the way. And the pastor says, this week, that phone call will come. Next week, the contract. Uh -uh, you were denying me. I was expecting an amen from the congregation. Don't deny me. You said amen last week. The, old, the man that prophesied like that in the Bible, eh? this, the type we, we do now, he prophesied on the wrong person. Isaac. He said, he took time before he knew. The utterance went. Mm, so, God will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, that's not how it works. Not this week. Not, that's why I said Jesus doesn't give false hope. The prophetic ministry is true. Even though they are fakes, eh? leave it. It's very true. Hallelujah. But we need to understand at what point does the prophetic achieve its aim among the people? <laughs> we can only know that as sons. We can only learn that from that perspective. And there's something else that Jesus is building. And he invests himself as the foundation of that building. Are you with me? When all of us come to that point where we can be led by God, and you, the fact that you are led by God doesn't mean that you don't need a pastor. 
Now, there are some people, because of the grace of God that is upon their lives, they have access to multiple giftings and multiple graces. That makes them wise spiritually. So you can be having a spiritual experience. You may need to meet with them to tell you the implication of the stirring. The nature of impartation that is responsible for the kind of stirring that you are receiving in your spirit. And how to manage it. So at every point in time, you will still need a man in your life. Just like we have men in our lives. And we are loyal to those men. Not just spiritually. We are loyal to them. In the natural. And it's not a hypocrisy. Because we have discovered that somehow, because of that connection, we begin to touch some spiritual things that we had not paid the price to touch. It means that we have accessing inheritance. Because you must understand that it's only a son that can be led two pathways into inheritance. A slave will always wander. Are you with me? And so, God seeks to shape some things in the life of his people. Because we intend to seize every ground that has been considered to the enemy. Grounds that false doctrines have created, and those grounds are very vast grounds. Hallelujah. Jesus paid for us with the price of his blood. So you can come to me and say, don't wear jeans. You, you own me. I'm your property. But the fact that he said I should not wear jeans doesn't make that a, a teaching. Say, did he? And then I look for scriptures that don't fit to try to him. You yourself have become unrighteous in that. And then somebody said, he died and went to hell and came back with tenets from the underworld to disciple people that are alive. So when we stood here and spoke and analyzed the content of that underworld revelation and put it in context, because there's no doctrine that goes forth that is not supported by a spirit. We have to trace the spirit that is behind those utterances. Pastors, I don't know where they are from. Some pastors called us and they, they blessed us. Some, one pastor, he kept cursing me for two months. Maybe he's in charge of distributing the book in his axis. <laughs> now, you see, the devil is still at work because the essence of deception is to take, away, take us away from this foundation. You may think that the sum total of your purpose upon the face of the earth is to look for money. And you are looking for money rigorously. The, the energy you have been using for the past five years is from a different source. It's mammon that has possessed your soul. Making you wise unto money. <laughs> yes. That's what falsehood comes to do. It just comes to give you something other than what this foundation is offering. Meanwhile, the foundation and the building is in the same context. Hallelujah. One came and he said, okay, that we should return to holy dressing. We should return to it. Oh. Hallelujah. You know, in this dispensation, we need to clean up everything. And we need to strike the balances accurately. Morality is not Christianity. It's not the same thing. There are people that are moral that are not morally sound that are not Christians. A sound Christian is going to be moral. These are two different things. And, and a, a Japanese monk that is very moral is not a Christian. Because most of them are more di disciplined than most of us. But it doesn't make them a Christian. The testimony of Christianity is not a changed life. It's an exchange life. No longer I that live it. It's what? 
the foundation has started leaving out another personality. This is not what I would have normally done. I, in, in, if it's me, I would have slapped, I would have, but something else took over. That's an exchange life. It's not change. Are you with me? You are not with me now. You don't like this part that I'm going. And these are the parts that we don't get to go that the devil preys on everybody. You don't like this part. Hallelujah. A man, a woman shall not wear that which pertinent to a man. Is that the only scripture there? You should not wear any garment that is of mixed material. Cotton and wool. Can you tell me what you are wearing? Were you part of the production process of your garment? Why, why were you not conscious of it? Mix cropping that my mother will not plant pepper, plant vegetable. Bible says we should not do that. <laughs> Don't even plow your field with bull and cow. It's no, you have violated. What exactly? The principle that is being illustrated, because in the Old Testament we have the principle, in the New Testament we have a spirit that works by that principle. The principle that is being illustrated in that scripture is just in multiple examples were given of the principle of separation from the world. All right? He said, Don't plow your field with what? An ox and, and a cow. Do not be unequally yoked with what don't plow your don't sow diverse seeds i hope you know that the sower that went to sow what he sowed was the message of the kingdom and then tomorrow i now bring somebody from france you now say motivation unto the high life i just finished a seminar now <laughs> <laughs> on the message of the king. I've sown a seed and then I now bring another. Now, if I keep sowing diverse seeds, what kind of people am I going to raise? Till separation. And the issue pertaining, the issue that concerns women and all of that, that one the historical perspective is affecting the context. Just like there are some times where culture affects the context. Like Jesus bringing a towel and the issue is washing the feet. Culture is affecting the context. Sometimes the historical perspective affects the context. Because in the worship of the gods of that particular territory that they are coming to take over their lands, all right? Are you with me? The women normally wear armor to worship that. There's, it's a god of perversion. So that instruction was given. Still relating to separation from the way the world does that stuff. And many examples of what is required of separation within the context of their reality were outlined. Giving us the principle. Are we, are we still here? Because I've always told people, Scripture is not capable of private interpretation. Because all of us are recipients of the Holy Ghost. So I cannot just bring a revelation that is strange to everybody. No, one or two people will have received the same kind of thing. Because I'm not the sole proprietor of this perspective. So it's not capable of private interpretation. And that's why the Bible says, holy men of old. It's not holy man. Men were moved the same way. So when they talk, you can confirm, you can... Oh. So if that is true, I've always challenged people, bring another scripture that supports that perspective that you are bringing so that we'll know how to tell women to dress. You know why those doctrinal issues, those issues have become relevant? It is because we don't trust the foundation. 
those details are to evolve from where? One Rasta guy came for crusade, gave his life to Christ. He had earrings on and all of that. Nobody spoke earring to him. His hair was natty dre. Eye man. He was an eye man. He came. <laughs> My God. The next day, he shaved his natty dre. No Bible study class. The foundation was speaking. Now, why does a pastor feel the responsibility to clone everybody? That's not your description. That's not your duty. That's why Paul said, take heed how you what? Because there is a temptation for you to overstep your boundary and not know that that foundation is living. So because of that, people have majored in areas that is not consistent with the foundation. Those days we wore trousers that were suspended. Hallelujah, hallelujah. But we did not have penetration in the realm. Oh, and I was doing that because I wanted to be an authentic Christian. A genuine. But we're still very wicked people. The Lord will help us. Traveling across the continent of Africa and preaching the gospel, I've seen something. The immaturity of the Nigerian church has affected the African church. Now, we do not have the luxury of waste that our fathers had. It was, it was waste. Mantles, heavy mantles. People became careless with mantles, altered things that shaped the body of Christ and, and, and gave us a major setback and a disadvantage. We can no longer celebrate babyhood Christianity. It's time for sons that want to do the will of their father. Christianity is not bondage. It's not bondage. Because I have done, I have done the bondage type for long. Didn't yield anything. The Holy Spirit himself had to come and rescue me. You are, you are far away. I was a, a, a figment of, a product of the doctrine of men. And it can be so dangerous. It takes you away from the foundation. You don't need to know all the details. Because the foundation is living. Hallelujah. And whenever a preacher comes and speaks to you, they, that's you, it will stick. Remember. It's only that which has affected your heart that can change your destiny. It has not affected your heart. There's something my sister told me before she went to Canada about 20 years ago. She saw the fire. Saw the desire for the word of God. Don't, hey, man. Study. I can study the Bible for 30 nights. 30 nights. Just study. Just study. Not to preach. Just study. Study. So she saw all of that and said, make sure you are not corrupted. And that one stuck. I hope you know it's not everything you remember. All the seminars you attend. <laughs> make sure that what you have is not corrupted. And, it, and that word activated some discernment inside of me. And there were many corridors that we walked that would have corrupted what we had. But that word was not just letters, but the word traveled with a spirit that opened a portal of discernment. It's 20 years now. And she came back, she said it this morning again. Although she didn't know she said it 20 years ago. Hallelujah. And that's why apostolic ministry is what we call the ministry of life. Because I'm ministering to the living foundation. My, my, my method of ministration must be in keeping with the realities of that depth. 
So Paul made a deliberate decision. And he said that my preaching and my teaching was not with oratory. It was not with the enticing words of man's wisdom. And that was a deliberate intention, deliberate plan that Paul decided to take in keeping with the realities on ground. My utterances were baked in power to move and pierce through your soul and bring your soul into repentance and hit the core of your being and cause the core of your being to, to, to be enlivened. Hallelujah. The Lord will help us. In the body of Christ, we have the foundation of Christ in many believers that have not yet understood how God's building takes place. It is time for us to understand that the investment of God's Spirit on your heart becomes a starting premise upon which your adventure in spirit life must be based. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.